Hello, Sean and Ryan Studios here, and today we're going to be showing you how to clean an NES controller. As you can see, we have this rather dirty one. We just got it the other day, and we want to see what's inside. So we decided to make a video about how to clean them up and all that. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take out these six screws so you can open her up. It just uses a small little Phillips head like this. And remember, don't apply too much force. If the screw doesn't want to come out, then don't take it out because... And make sure not to strip them either. You can easily break the screw post inside or strip the screw. So just go gently and go slowly. And now you're done with the screws. So very gently, Lift the top off. If there's any force, don't rip it off. I did that within this the screw right NES here. console and it ripped one of the screw posts off. But that was before I was really experienced. Alright, and here you find the main board. Just carefully take that wire out. And then you can lift the board up. And there it is. An original Nintendo controller board. This one's actually pretty clean. Yep, needs minimal cleaning. These usually get oh, the yes. dirtiest, as you can tell. You want to be careful because they break easily. Yes. Those are actually pretty dirty. <laughs> yeah, pretty bad. And here, take out the buttons. All right, just let me get a picture for their alignment. Uh, oh, wait. <laughs> anyway, normally, I like to take pictures of everything before I take it apart so I both know how to put it back together and know where each piece goes. That's a pretty useful For taking thing. apart consoles, that is a very good idea. Or advanced things like a GameCube controller, which you can see I've done here. Current That's project. A current project. But, anyways. So, yeah, here's the front shell. There's a ton of dirt inside. Pretty bad, it needs to be cleaned out. <laughs> now the back shell, you can get the screws out, like so. This one is pretty clean. Yep. Not too bad. So we will get started with that process. What you usually use is water and rubbing alcohol. We've got ourselves. That will get off all the germs and it will get off Mainly, so, more than important than that, all the dirt and stuff. We got ourselves some 70% right here. I think 90% is ideal because it evaporates much faster, but I've been using 70% to clean cartridges for a long time and it's fine. So, let's get started. Now, normally what we'll use to clean this stuff, especially little controllers like this, is the Q-tips. They work really well. So what you just do is take your rubbing alcohol, turn that up. Just if it's sort of full like this one is, you just take your Q-tip, get doused in that. If it's not full like this, you can pour it into another little container, or the cat. Or the cat. So what we'll start with is the back. See, these Q-tips are really good at getting inside those little things like this. Uh, yeah, like especially by like the imprints, those usually get dirty. Sometimes you might even need a toothpick to get that out. <laughs> yep. Alright, so some important thing to consider is the little seams on the sides. Those trap a lot of dirt in them, so make sure you clean those really well. So with the back shell now clean, it's time to repeat the same process with the front shell. Now this part is going to be a little bit harder because you have the buttonholes. So you got to clean around there 
around the outlines, and then inside need to be clean too. But besides that, it's really the same process. Just be careful of the sticker. Alright, so a quick tip is, at least for the A and B buttons, it's super easy to take a Q-tip and just circle it around in that hole, applying force to get all the dirt out. And after a little while, it should become nice and clean. This is also a good way to get off stubborn parts. And there we go. Easy. Now that both halves of the shell are done, let's move on to the button contacts. What you want to do here is just grab your Q-tip, dip it in your cleaner, and then just gently, very gently, just go over the whole thing and just get all the dirt and dust off. These parts are very fragile, so be very careful while cleaning them, as it's super easy to rip, especially where the little button pieces meet the base. Another thing you may want to do is see the little black spot? Just take your Q-tip, hold on like this with your fingers very carefully, and clean, kind of twist the black piece to get all the gears where the button pushes off. You can also do that to the board as I'll show later. And with the button pads done, it's time to move on to the buttons. We'll start off with the D-pad, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Just take your Q-tip, once again, dip it in your cleaning solution, and just scrub away. This one is pretty bad. So we'll see what we can get off. Now with all the buttons done, all you have left is the board. So just be careful when handling this, make sure not to damage any wires, but it's an NES controller, so it should be pretty simple. So all you have to do here is, unless your board's dirty, this one's rather clean, all you have to do is take your Q-tip, dip it in your rubbing alcohol, and then make sure it's rather dry, just slightly moist because you're dealing with electronic circuits here. And just rub it over each button contact. And just get all the dirt that's lifted. And dry it off afterwards. Do this so that your buttons have better contact. I know on the Super Nintendo, it's almost required for the start and select buttons Almost every Super Nintendo controller I've ever used had faulty buttons, but just cleaning them like this got them working every time again. It's a very easy fix. See the start and select buttons on even this controller. Original Nintendo controller. They're pretty bad. See, here's a clean Q-tip. And there's some dirt on there now, even after I clean those. Let's get the D-pad. Now this controller didn't have any button contact issues, so this is just a more precautionary thing so it doesn't happen soon in the future. But if you're having button contact issues, this might be the possible cause. And now let's just clean up the board a little bit. And then we can let it all dry. I'd recommend waiting. Well, if you only did what we did in this video, you can probably wait 20 minutes and you're safe. But if you used any kind of water at all to rinse out the back shell or buttons, you should probably wait over an hour. So you're 100% sure all the moisture is gone because you don't want it building up in your controller. All right, it is now time to put your disassembled controller back together again. So, it's pretty self-explanatory, but 
put all the buttons back inside in their respective slots. Just like so. Take your button contacts, put them back in there. And then you can take the board. Just kind of lay it down into their holes. Then take this wire goes around like that. Make sure everything fits right. And then it's time to put the bo uh, back cover back on. All right, so everything is in there nice and good. And the back cover lines up. And then you, all that's left is to screw it back together carefully. Now, Whenever I do this with old hardware, I make sure to take the screw and put it in there. And what I do is instead of screwing it in first thing, I go the reverse direction to hear a little click and hear it go down. Like that. That means the end of the screw got to the start of the thread, so it should go in easy and you know you're not going to do anything unwanted with your plastic, like re-thread it or crack it. Now don't screw each one in all the way just yet. So that way you can evenly distribute pressure and force between the screw posts. You do not want to break them, especially since these controllers are nearing over 30, 35 years old now. So you want to be especially careful when dealing with plastic this old. And you don't want to ruin your controller either. All right, I'll speed up the rest of this process for you guys. And there you go, you should now have a nice clean NES controller that plays and feels great. And you can now enjoy your favorite NES games with a nice clean controller. Whoopsie. Finally, we can play two player. And it's working. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video and learned some useful information. And see you guys next time.